Thank you so much for staying tuned to this channel. If you just joined us, this is TMI on my TV network. Remember that every 10th December, uh, the focus for this year marks the 75th anniversary of one of the world's most groundbreaking global pledges, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This landmark document enshrines the inalienable rights that everyone is entitled to as a human being, regardless of race, color, sex, uh, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or other status. Human Rights Day 2023 theme is equality, reducing inequalities, advancing human rights. The Human Rights Day is celebrated around the world on December 10 every year. It focuses on the fundamental rights and liberties of people and advocates for the rights that transcend nationality, gender, ethnicity, race, sexuality, religion, or any other distinction. Now, having said that, we have a guest here with us in the studio. He is no other person than uh, Jude Obasomi, a human rights activist, a political analyst, political affairs commentator. Welcome to TMI. I appreciate your coming. Thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, oh. Good morning, listeners. All right. Now, every 10th December, globally, we celebrate World Human Rights Day. And this time around, it's all about equality, fighting inequality. How come they still have this perception of we all humans have this perception that there's this inequality? in every facet of our life. You get to see the female folks saying we have to be equal with the male folks in terms of job, pay, park, in terms of rights, in politics, in religion. We need to attain that particular right as the male folks. After all, talking about gender equality and all that from a perspective, what do you feel about it? All right, uh, thank you very much. I strongly believe that uh uh, human rights is, is non-negotiable. One of the best documents we have had in recent time to be do with the human rights declaration that people should have certain privilege, certain rights, benefits, attention that are not uh, dependent on your sex, your age, your color, or where you come from. So that is what that document is all about. And try to see how we can promote, you know, promote such in a, in a, in the world in your country. In our country, it's clearly stated that as Nigerians, we have some fundamental rights, which um, whether you are poor, you are rich, you are expected to benefit from such a provision. But what we've come to see in our country is that uh, most of the time, uh, people don't have access. Most of the time, most of persons are not even aware of their rights. That is why you see that uh, when rights are being violated, people just feel that, okay, maybe it's my portion, or maybe how, that is how God wants it. But that is very, very wrong. Most of us don't know. And that is why for us in the civil society sector, we are interested in, and will continue to do it, to talk to people, to educate them about their rights. Hmm. Because where my rights stop, that is where another person's rights start from. So there must be a synchronizing synergy between myself and the other person. So where there's a problem, that we're going to have conflicts, both talk about and being denied of my rights or, or privileges. Yes, you just made in your intro, you mentioned the issue of um, women contesting with uh, the, the male, male counterpart. Food. I don't want to see it as a contest. But it is a contest. No, 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 no. I don't, no, no, no. This is the contest. We are giving it a negative connotation. Okay. It may not be right for mm. those of us that, that are, uh, you know, that, that work toward promoting the rights of women. Yes. They are saying that they should be given equal opportunity to put in their best. Mm. It's a record that today we mentioned names like Adelie Williams, one time Vice Chancellor of our Investor of Benin. Mm. We we'll talk about the women that led the Abba riot, about taxation when women felt in Abba that they were being subjected to unnecessary taxation, taxation. and taxes. Yes. Women came out, but the men were drinking their tombo somewhere. Mm. But women said, no, we have to come out. And they watch of recent, women are coming out to contribute their quota. It's not, we are not, sorry. People feel that we're in a man's war, but for me, I feel that, sorry, we must complement, the women must complement what we are doing. We are not competing. Mm -hmm. If it is good for Mr. A, definitely be good for Mr. B. I recall that Mr. B might have a wife, might have a sister, sister daughter, might have a daughter, mm -hmm. that the benefit is accruing now, might also, you know, you know, trickle down to him. So I believe that the women are just saying that let us be given the opportunity 
to serve. They are going to appoint to contribute to our quota. Recall the about the affirmative action is still on, but the question is how many states in our country, even in, uh, in the presidency, have been able to imbibe that? Yeah, we go to some, uh, uh, some states, the level of appointment of women is very poor. Uh, we, we want to commend uh, the Governor Basek for at least trying, but I believe we can do more, to give women the space to occupy sensitive positions and they will deliver. You understand? I want to commend the Commissioner for, for, for Women Affairs, a woman, for her drive in trying to ensure that this issue of gender challenges, gender issues, you know, are brought to the minimum level. Women should give the opportunity. That's what, what the team talks about, that we try to see how we can reduce, so we In cannot eradicate quality, it. Yes. We work toward reducing it. How do you reduce it? It's by creating an, an enabling environment for women or for people to, to give in their best. Do you understand? But by the time you now create, you say you are giving opportunity, but you are create, creating unnecessary barriers, unnecessary you know, obstacles that may not enable them to give in their best. It's not good at all. So we believe that as we mark the year 2023 20, Human Rights Day, it's an increased demand on government, demand on the people to know their rights and ensure that those rights are not infringed upon. Recall, there are certain rights that are not a suspect you know, you're supposed to enjoy and go to the police station. But most of the time, they just tell you, once you get to the police station, you cannot talk, you have to keep mute, until maybe a lawyer comes to inter interact with you. But that suspect has some fundamental rights, which should, it should not be deprived from, you know, of, of, of uh, you know, uh, enjoying. Enjoy. Come to the issue of, edu of, of education. Hmm. You will see that, fine, because you are from the South-South, uh, you scored 300 or 340, you may not be able to secure admission to uh, university to read medicine. Whereas, Another person from another part of the country, maybe from the core north, scores about 120. I give that person opportunity. But at the end of it all, this same person will now come into the society to begin to work. Is that one proper? It's not proper at all. So we should give people the enabling environment to give in their best. And I can assure you, when people are given that environment to work, Nigerians are very good persons. You begin to ask us, why is it that when Nigerians travel, even our so called, our, so not so called, our soldiers, those in the armed forces, when they go on foreign missions, why is it that they excel and they come to Nigeria, they are unable to excel? It shows that the environment over there might be conducive for them to bring their best. So when we have such environment, people are prepared to give their best. And I, I want to appeal that more opportunities should be given to women to come and govern. Or maybe for we that are the male folks now can also learn from their style of leadership. All right. Now let's zoom in more. Uh, though we've given a very strong foundation to the discussion, let's zoom in more to Nigerians. Some of the opinion that Nigerians' rights have been trampled upon because they do not know their rights. Some are saying even if they know their rights and they try to enforce it, there may just be a serious backlash. What do you have to say about this? Uh, it's just that uh, for based on my little experience working in the space, I realize that most of us don't want to suffer a little. You have an issue, a policeman comes to arrest you, the next thing, you begin to cry, you begin to call people, come and help me, I'm being victimized, mm -hmm. without actually expressing yourself properly. You, 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 are, you are driving on the road, you commit a crime, and there's a the penalty for it. You are unable to face the penalty, you begin to call one or two contacts to come and help you out. Now you, 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 you go to the gas station to go and get some fuel for your vehicle and realize that, sorry, what the attendant is selling to you, not up to a liter. Mm. You are unable to talk. After all, thank God I don't have the fuel to buy. You go to the school, maybe a lecturer, you know, feels, you know, you know a lecturer is engaging you on some other activities that are not proper at all. Or maybe write an exam and you fail and you don't have the moral confidence to engage the lecturer. But they find, I wrote this course very well, I did the assignment and what have you, how come did I fail? Or you, have, you are in a relationship, and you, you know, in a relationship and the is not favorable enough and you feel that, oh, what will people say about it? Uh, let me just continue to bear. Mm -hmm. You end up dying in it. You have a right, to, at least, to cry out. To cry out. And that's what we are saying, that, that people should speak out. M m most of the time now, m uh, uh, the male food are even violated at homes. But how many kids do we hear? We only hear women being violated, women being tortured. So I believe that we must scale up by creating more enlightenment. There are several documents that people can, uh, you know, get across to, look at them, and, and you get yourself equipped. And again, there's nothing wrong in you if you decide to join any of these social movements. 
like Accusus platform, you have the Cons of NGOs, you have the Ado School, and many more. You can join, and we also learn. In it. But most of the time, we are complex and we are not interested in doing anything. So that when you are being aroused, you may not even know that you have a right to even go ahead to question the decisions of the law enforcement agency. But, but some of the people that if you choose to resist or choose to express your right, it gets worse for you. Can you remember that sometimes, situation whereby you want to like exercise your right, mm. you end up being beaten by these so-called law enforcement <laughs> agencies, and you say that they don't want to suffer a little. That is where Who we wants get to suffer a little. Yeah, that is where we get it wrong. Mm. In some way, I believe that some of our comrades will be watching me now. Yes. We have four different battles mm. where we had to make a lot of sacrifices for the betterment of other persons. But most Nigerians are not prepared at all. Recall in 2012 or so, there was a massive engagement. Yes. When our uh, former president increased the cost of fuel, right? We all came out. We engaged government. Some of us, they used tear gas to chill out of the streets in Benin, also in, in Abuja. Mm. But this time around, the cost of oil has gone to over, let me do the about 500 percent increment, mm. and nobody is talking, and, and no one suffer. I want to become natural, I can buy, but not proper. But if we decide to engage, I'm rest assured that the fight you are making for today is not for yourself, but for your children. Mm. Imagine if we did not fight to get negotiate or fight, whatever we want to put it, to get our independence, we would have still be under the colonial rule. Mm -hmm. So Nigeria must be prepared. To engage. I'm not saying that we should go and destroy or fight, but there are other constructive ways of engaging government, of engaging those in authority, even engaging those in your community to ensure that your rights are not being violated. But as I said before, nobody is prepared to make one or two sacrifices. Mm -hmm. I was driving into Ekpoma yesterday, um, Benin yesterday, and there was a terrible, you know, traffic jam on the express road. I, I looked at the other cars, and for all of us, we were just struggling to see how we can maneuver to pass. I came down with my car. To help in control the traffic. Somebody told me, or oh, going to a motorboat, what's your business? You can mm. imagine that. Well, that. I was not doing that for myself, but to ensure that we have easy passage. Easy passage. So you can see that Nigeria, we have the, the state has reduced us to a level that we don't have value for our life sake. You just feel that anyhow I can survive, anyhow I can make them just go ahead. What about um, the, the reckless bills by BDC? We, we have been engaged, they're going to engage us. Some people just I beg, I'm tired. Let me just go and get my solar. Let me get my fuel, even though it's expensive. And I'll power my gen. I'll have any energy to do what I want to do. So you can see the level of frustration among Nigerians. So that nobody is prepared. Somebody will say that, sorry, those that are fought, what has happened to them? It's either they, are, they, are, they lose their jobs or they are prosecuted on justice. Or they pay the ultimate price. That is it. People like what fella said. I no one die. Mama did for us. Papa did for us. Pekin did for us. Is that what is really affecting the minds of Nigerians, even right now, to at least fight for their rights? That, you know, when Fela was singing some years ago, yes. some friends said the guy was on drugs, on drugs, was unconscious. But I tell you this. That's what is happening all, all right that now. You sang about. Mm. They, are all, they are all happening now. Mm. When he said Mama did for us and what have you, now, depending to what is going on now, nobody wants to pay, make that sacrifice. Right. These are going bad. People are not talking. Your rights have been infringed upon and nobody is talking. We, we thank the National Human Rights Commission. We have a state branch, right? Mm, yes. But I asked the state coordinator, that was last week, that how come we are only situated in Benin? If, for example, there is a case about human rights in Nakuku Edo, my local government, in my village in Moga, how will I get to Benin to come and share my, my pains or my worries? He now said, sorry, we, we are only operating in Benin. What they can do, they can put some calls across. So you can just imagine that. So you can even see that the issue of government that has been put in place now to address these issues are more or less not too effective in other suburbs. You only see it in major cities, which is not helpful at all. So mm -hmm. it's an appeal. If you want to see how best, you want to make that commission to work very well, I want to see how people can know their rights. Their, 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 their rights. Their right. There's nothing wrong in, 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 in them having branches. In local government, you have the social development unit. What are they doing? These are some of the things that you're going to do. You have the natural orientation agency, agency. NOAA. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? These are agencies of government now put in place now to see how they can drive the message, how they can inform the people about their rights. I want to commend activist comrades that with the little resources we have, we are doing a lot of work, trying to talk to people about their rights, letting them know in case of their issues, who, who and who you can meet. Mm -hmm. And for some of us now, we have been able to engage constructively. No okay. thanks to JDPC, Josie Maria, and some NGOs now that their focus more or less, see now we can 
educate our people. What we need mm -hmm. is education and that will to be able to implement what you've learned. All right, someone's saying in uh, the, the country that we are living in right now, freedom of speech is, is like, you know, free, but freedom after speech, talking about the consequence, that mm -hmm. is where we have issue. Is this also a factor that is the really, you know, will last say making some persons not being able to speak out even when they know that they're being oppressed? Freedom of speech, yes, it's free. You can say whatever you want to say, but our freedom of that speech is not guaranteed. Okay, uh, you know the f government of, I think, to that of um, mm. Buhari or Jonathan, mm. President Jonathan, then who went tried to talk about the Freedom of Information Act that was eventually PAB that was passed. Yes, and some of us felt that at least now we'll be given the right to to talk, to talk mm. but we must talk what constructively. We give the right to express our opinions. We must express such a way that you are not being abusive or what have you. But now, even for you to get some sensitive information from certain agencies of government, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. At times, when you talk, either they label you, you are from the opposition. When you say that things in Nigeria are going, you know, uh, things, cost of living in Nigeria is going very high, they say, no, that guy is not a loyal person, not faithful. Mm. It's being sponsored by the opposition. opposition. When roads are bad and people come out to engage government, they say they have no right to even talk about the quality of the state of their roads. They are being sponsored. Everything is not for government, is being sponsored. sponsored. So for that reason, now, people are scared. Some persons are not for some of us, because for all we're going to talk and talk intelligently. Mm. I, I went to a radio station, a TV station, you know, and I was talking, talking about uh, the budget or the current, the next year's budget. And I made the position. The next thing I saw now, somebody just came out and told me to, I think they want me to cut. cut break, I yeah. was surprised. Hmm. I did not, I only said that the, the, the amount being devoted to defense must be proved, reduced further. Rather, we can concentrate more on other infrastructure like road, light, and what road, road, light, health, and education. Because virtually these four components affect the average Nigerian. That was my position, that the budget was more or less lopsided into areas where they can siphon funds, which is not too proper at all. So I was asked to cut. So you can see, even the media too is also not giving some of us uh, the, the opportunity to express our opinions, thanks to ITV that are giving at least a fair playground for people to constructively express their, their position. Are so sure? that is the ugly situation that we have you know, found ourselves mm. in the country, which I believe that you and I have a major role to play Mm -hmm. We can't just leave it alone for the government. We must continue to control ourselves to make sure we do the need. But however, uh, there are a lot of things that we need to do. That FOI is not uh, sincerely, it's not working. It's only when government wants to use it to suppress and oppress the people that that bill will, that, that have to come out. Well, 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 we thought that it will not work. No, but the thing is that it's for everybody <coughs> have access to information. So I'm not saying you get that information. Yes, isn't it also how well do you plan to use it? That is on one hand. Now, some of the opinion that the reason why we are having this kind of a situation whereby many of us don't know our rights or don't have the guts to fight for our rights is because the human rights activists, some of them, they have been sponsored. Some of them <coughs> are now virtually into politics. Hence, they are lopsided in their sense of judgment. What do they say about that? Um. That question is very I know, I know that that is technical. quite sensitive and technical because you are from that particular That's sector. Yeah. But yeah. I'll go ahead and uh, answer it. Uh, the civil society activists, Comrade, we lost it when, after we fought for the return of democracy, uh, to the democratization of the country, we did not take part. We allowed these guys who never knew what was going on in the country to become governors, to become House of Rep members, to become president. At the end of it all now, we were far from gov governance. Mm -hmm. And we kept on complaining, complaining. Well, we were the ones that fought to ensure that we had democracy. democracy. That way we, we got it. I remember yes. in the forum then with Lee Professor Yai, I mm -hmm. said that what the strategy we are adopting now may not favor us. We have spent, we have risked our lives, spent our money for this. Now we have gotten it and nobody wants to contest. Now, some of us activists, yes, you are, you are right, uh, they've gone into politics, which is very good. I'm not against that, but I don't know whether there's a particular spirit, I'm to use that term, whether it's the spirit that once you get into office, you forget what you have been driving all this while. 
mm. protection of rights, protection of women, uh, good governance, and many more. Mm. You end up doing some funny, funny things yeah. that it's unheard of. Mm. So for me, I get so ashamed at times. That's when they call me at times, comrade, comrade, Una. You guys are supposed to be comrades, mm. but you guys have come to raid, to raid. the system. Mm. Which is very sad. But for me, we have, uh, in as far as we are living on earth, uh, issue, issue will definitely come up whereby these comrades might be looking for one or two appointments here and there. We'll be the one to say, sorry, this guy is not fit. They are, most of them are in government. Anyone in those states, most, I don't want to mention names. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They are, they are occupying sensitive positions. Some are saying once they are given a position in government or governors, they will just stop talking. No, it's stop talking. They, they just stop acting. Uh, no, no, excuse me. If they the stop... If going wrong, they turn their face. They don't want to talk anymore <laughs> because they are there in government. How uh, come? Uh, excuse me. If you say they stop talking, no problem. They even join in perpetuating evil. Mm. They justify evil tendencies, evil policies. That's my own annoyance. If you keep quiet, no problem. You can keep quiet of your own, you can keep quiet. But when you now legitimize, you know, fallen behaviors, or you now join the state to now torment those you claim to be supporting before, now it's terrible. But it's quite sad that uh, government has known most of us that are more or less um, people that are poor. I want to give them little carrots. They hand up misbehaving and do what is wrong. But I commend our com some of our comrades, I don't want to mention names, who have come to remain very firm. And I want to appeal to them. Let us continue. It is cheaper to remain firm because the name you have been able to build over the years, one million or ten million is not big enough for you to compromise. So let's continue. However, no matter the world society is now, you have those class of persons. Among Jesus Christ's disciples, twelve of them, one of them I went I, you know, to go and betray our Lord Jesus Christ. So but this time like around, that, but this time around, in activism, we have more than one betrayer, so to speak, to the cause. Once yes. they see that carrot dangled before them, if they for those about what they stand for, what they stood for in the past, and they start dining and winding with this same set of persons that are pressing or preventing people from enjoying their fundamental human rights. You see, let me just give you a case now. I engaged an activist on an issue. Yes. I marked to my was being uh, oppressed in one local government because she led a protest mm. demanding for reduction in taxes. Because of that, the woman was asked to leave a shade, normally called it shade, where she sells items. Yes. So we, we came into the issue and wanted to resolve it. But the comrade that I respected very well, he just came and said, no, that what the woman did was wrong. How can she, be, how can she lead a protest against government? And I said, what was the protest all about? Mm -hmm. You increased taxes for them from 200 to 500. People could not talk. The woman was bold enough to, to coordinate e efforts. Mm. And I said that what the human did was wrong. Recall, in your days, you were involved in worse things than this. Mm. President Jonathan increased cost of oil that time. You were ready to sell your card for the struggle so that we can engage government. But now, because you are comfortable, because you now have somebody, you have escort that goes around with you, mm. you feel that it's all over. But mind you, after a time, that's your seat. You will leave and you come and join us. So, if you're unable to make create soft, um, create a good platform for you, you might have issues having soft land. So, I believe that some of us know this are right, but the way we apply these rights mm -hmm. is what matters to some of us. We apply the rights based on convenience. Right. If I'm convenient with the particular position, I'll fool and say that this side should be, but it's very sad and painful. Oh, but right. I, if I want to encourage comrades out there, let's not give up. Oh, because right. tomorrow, if we fail today, our children will have source. Daddy, what did you do? Did Today we talk about, uh, uh, um, um, you know, the, uh, the South African uh, human rights leader. Yeah. Then Nelson Desmond, Mandela, Nelson Mandela, Desmond, Desmond Tutu. Tutu. These are names. And the rest of these that. are names that we refer to. Today we even mentioned our own brother, Fela Nicola Pakuti. So what will you be remembered for? Is it that you are remembered for uh, somebody who joined the state to, to to make sure that our rights are not protected? Work toward protecting the rights. If you cannot make things better for the people, don't make it worse for them. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Comrade Judah. Bass on me. Well, there's like a strong message to our comrades. Should I call them? Some of them fallen comrades. What did you really stood for? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, well, well, Dominic, Dominic is there right now. I think he has a, a, a question to, to ask. So, Dominic, over to you. Okay. Okay. Uh We've been following your discussion from the Abuja end here, and it's quite uh, germane. Some of the issues you raised and the contribution of uh, the persons who you mentioned their name. Uh, I know that the issue of women's rights 
as being a problem, especially in this uh, side of the world where we are, where there is so much disregard for the rights of the citizens. But I want to take you um, the issue of insecurity, because if you look at the universal human right as declared by the UN, the, for the right state, uh, the government wants to ensure that uh, citizens are safe and it's your rights, your human right that you are safe. Now, what's your take uh, with the government is going about uh, these issues that have to do with uh, insecurity and um, the, the kidnapping and the banditry uh, ev happening everywhere vis-a-vis -vis women rights and the, the, your rights to be safe in wherever you are? Uh, thank you very much. No, I didn't get your intro, but I want to uh, respond based on where I started, you know, hearing you properly. Yes, we have rights to safety, education, to health, basic health, and many more. But within the context of our country, like I said earlier, right, the, the, the opportunity of you to exercise your rights, or how it is defined, is a function of the person who is expected to make sure that you are able to exercise such rights. You mentioned the issue of security now. If you go to our local communities, the people are now securing themselves. We mean that government to a very large extent too has failed in that area. Billions of naira have been spent daily on security. I was shocked when the uh, army chief came to the National Assembly and said that the problem they are having is the judiciary. The problem we are having is the correctional centers. You can just imagine how we have gone ahead now to imbibe this BSC that is blame another person for your failure. People are no longer sure of the state securing them. Between um, Ekoma and Aochi, you need to see the number of vigilantes and to understand some level of soldiers trying to secure the people. The people have lost faith. But however, we cannot say that we are going to have our own private security undermining that of the state. People have decided to procure those security outfits, no matter how expensive it might be, so that they can be secured. Because somebody that is uh, safe, that can engage tomorrow. tomorrow. If you now decide to keep quiet, you, you allow yourself to be attacked, a minute silence may not even be enough. The majority left of the minister at the end of the day is only having 30 or less than 30 seconds silence. So it's an issue. And I still believe that the state must work towards at least providing one or two items. In terms of education, now you have increase in private institutions coming up. Government is not even interested in ensuring that people have access to quality education. That's not shameful. In terms of health, you have the private health care centers that are run from Kuti. From here, when the Minister of Health went ahead to put in place so that people at the locals can assess primary health care services. Mm. But is that working? All right. Dominic, over to you. Okay, let's okay. look at uh, you yourself as an individual. How do you now protect your own right? Because you talked about the judiciary here. Uh, we have cases where uh, people who are being convicted and by the time you go through uh, those crimes they committed, there are issues that ordinarily you should be able to uh, protect yourself or be able to uh, make it known to whoever is prosecuting that your right was actually violated. Uh, for instance, I remember those uh, period when we have innocent men are being picked on the road simply because you have dreadlock under the guise that you may be a froster and all that. And we see so many arrests done without proper arrests. Now, how do you begin to checkmate these issues, ensuring that uh, the citizens' rights are not better simply because of maybe your color or probably the way you dressed? All right, thanks very much. You see, I believe that for us to effectively address this challenge, uh, it would be proper for us to have a multi-sectoral engagement particularly of the sector agencies, right? The people must also know their rights. I, I always tell people, don't say because you know your right, you end up doing what is wrong. The law will pick you. You understand? I was driving down to the store, I'm using some examples which are quite practical. 
at about 6.30 this morning, the traffic light, the indicator was showing red. So I stopped. We well, don't have any right whatsoever to, to cross. To beat the traffic, yeah. To beat the traffic. But the car just came. Stopped for a while. Thereafter, the guy said, oh, guy, you know, go move. He next thing he moved. Let's assume now I decided to move and I'm arrested. And I've been to say, no, the road was free and not. There are laws and procedures that we are expected to follow. It's just that most of all, we feel that we are above the law. And when it comes to the issue of prosecution, it's the poor man that suffers, suffers a lot with due respect to the judiciary. But the big men, when they commit hideous crime that affect generations, is plea bargain. They just go, before you know it, some ten cars will come up here and there, and the case will just die. So by the time people are properly prosecuted for defiling or other person's rights, or for not fully what is obtainable in the law, it will help other pe persons to take caution. For me, I'm very conscious. That is why I minimize the kind of trouble or problem I look for myself. Right. The one that I cannot defend, nothing at all will drive me close to that position. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Judy have and that guest waiting for us right now in the studio. Thank you for throwing more light on uh, uh, the human rights. They will talk at length about this particular issue. For them to trample on your right, try as much as you can to be law abiding. It's that simple. Then when you have a case, of course, we still have some good activists. Yes, we have some ones that are like, you know, dying in one right now with the government of the day, but we still have some straight human rights activists that can come up and fight for your cause. Visa -vis is one of them. Yeah, he's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you thank so, you so much. much. I appreciate your coming. Thank you very All much. Right. Up next, we want to take a look at the reasons behind the exodus of multinational companies from Nigeria and its overall impact in our society. Don't go away. We'll be right back.